Hello everybody, today we are going to be doing, not derivatives, well, kind of, we are going to be taking integrals, indefinite integrals to be exact. Now, what is an indefinite integral? Well, it turns out integrals are actually pretty closely related to derivatives. If I write out something right here, right, here's our little integral symbol, right? Say we're taking the integral of f of x, right? And we're going to get an answer, right? We're going to get something completely different. We're going to get g of x, we'll call it. You can call it whatever you want. I want to call it g of x. What's the relationship here, right? How, how do we go from f of x to g of x, right? Well, integrals are simply the antiderivative, right? So we're taking the antiderivative of f of x and getting g of x, right? So if integrals are just the opposite of derivatives, right? We're kind of just working backwards. Then that should mean that if we take the derivative of g of x, right, so if we take g prime of x, then that should get us back to f of x, right? We take the antiderivative of f of x, we get g of x, and if we take the derivative of g of x, we get f of x. Now, what does this mean in practice, right? Because f's, g's, and x's aren't going to help us, right? We need some numbers, we need to practice this to make sense of it, right? So let's say I want to take the derivative, uh, well, the integral, sorry, the integral of 3, right? And we want to find what that's equal to, right? But we're, we're not sure, right? Because we've never taken an integral before. Well, we don't know what our g of x is going to be equal to, right? But we can ask ourselves, all right, we know that g prime of x is going to get us 3. So what do I need to take the derivative of to get 3? Now, if you're a master at taking the derivative by now, you would know that all we have to do to get 3 is take the derivative of 3x, right? That works. That works with the equations we've given so far, right? If we're taking the derivative of 3x, we get our answer is equal to 3, right? Equal to 3. So we're just moving backwards right now, right? Now let's do something else. Say we're taking the integral of, uh, mm, what do I want to do? Let's say we're taking the integral of x squared, right? You might ask yourself, okay, well, I don't know how to integrate yet, right? It still, it still doesn't make too much sense for me. I'm used to doing the derivatives. So what would I have to take the derivative of to get x squared, right? Well, I know when I'm taking the derivative, my exponent, my power, decreases by 1, right? So our original function, is it, well, it's going to have an x in it, and it was probably raised to the third power, right? Because if we take the derivative of something to the third power, our answer is to the second power, right? And here, actually, let's just take the derivative of this, right? So say we're taking the derivative of x cubed, right? What is that? We get 3x squared. Well, that's not what we have in pink, right? So that can't be our answer, because when we take the derivative of x cubed, we bring that 3 to the front. However, we're integrating only x squared. There's nothing there. So when we bring our 3 to the front, there must be something there that gets rid of it, right? Now, what times 3 would get rid of a 3. Well, it would be 0, but that would get rid of our entire function. But it also turns out that 1 third does the same thing, right? If you do 1 third times 3, you just get 1, right? And we can check this, right? Let's just take the derivative of 1 third x cubed. So if we take the derivative with respect to x of 1 third x cubed, right? You don't know how to do this by now. We're just doing the power rule, right? We bring our 3 to the front multiply it by everything we have and lower the power by 1. 3 times a third is just equal to 1, so we have 1 times x squared is equal to x squared, right? And we, we just checked ourselves, right? We know indeed now that the antiderivative of x squared is equal to 1 third x cubed, right? So let's write out, I'm going to write out a little formula for us all to follow. Let's do this. Let's clear our screen and say we are taking the derivative of some x, right? Our answer is going to be equal, and x is to the nth power, right? Our answer is going to be x to the n plus 1 power. If you remember when we did derivatives, we did it to the n minus 1 power because the power went down. Now the power is going up. So we get x to the n plus 1 power all over n plus 1. And so I'm going to do a little, here, let me write that a little bigger. I'm going to do a little recap of when we did the derivative just so we can make this relationship clear, right? Say if we were taking the derivative of x to the nth power, our answer would be n times x to the n minus 1 power. So when we did derivatives, 
we were multiplying and lowering the power. And when we're doing integrals, we raise the power and then we divide by that new power. So here's what we're going to do, right? Now let's let's plug in, let's do another example with our, our definition that we have here. And we're gonna say that n, n cannot here, let me write this in blue so it doesn't look like a mess. We'll say that n cannot equal negative one, right? Because if we have n equals negative one, then we'll end up dividing by zero. You can't divide by zero, that just doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna say that n doesn't equal negative one, right? So let's just do another example. Say we are doing the integral of three and let's, yeah, let's say three x squared, right? And using our little uh, definition that we set up right here, right? We can do this, right? So we're gonna have three x, right? We're gonna raise that power, so two plus one is three. And then we're going to divide by that new power. So remember our n was equal to 2 originally. So 2 plus 1 is going to be equal to 3. That's our new power, right? And then we can cancel out our 3s. They divide each other out. And we'll get that our answer is x cubed. Now, there's one more little quirk about integrals, right? Let me clear the screen so we could do another thing, right? Here, let us say... Uh, let us say that we have our integral, we'll do the same one, integral of 3x squared, right? And now we know that that's just equal to x cubed, right? Because if we take the derivative of x cubed, right, we get 3x squared. But if we take the derivative of x cubed plus 74, we get 3x squared. And if we take the derivative of x cubed plus any constant, we'll say um, yeah, 50 this time. Oh, hold on, I wrote a four up there before. Let me just erase that real quick for clarity. So we got three x squared. And after taking the derivative of x cubed plus 50, we get three x squared. Well, that's a little strange, right? There are infinite, there's an infinite amount of derivatives. There are an infinite amount of functions that we could take the derivative of and get the exact same answer, right? So if we're integrating 3x squared and there are an infinite amount of functions that we can get for our answer, how do we ever know if the one we get is truly correct? Well, here's the thing, right? All of our antiderivatives have an x cubed in it. The only thing that's different is the constant, right? We did 74 at first, we did 74, we did 50, we had no constant, right? So when we're integrating, doing indefinite integrals, we always want to have at the end plus c, right? And c is just for that random constant that it could be, right? We don't know which one it is because we're doing indefinite integrals, right? When we move on to doing definite integrals, we'll actually use a strategy to find what that c is. But for now, while we're doing indefinite integrals, always, always remember plus c. If you made it to the end of this video, Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, always put them in the comments. And I hope you learned something.